this set and then she was in turn broken and you just saw the second wreck against Huber serve Sellis leads by one set to none For that first set, Sella started to really find the lines and the, the remote positions of the court. At one stage, Huber had almost three times as many winners as Sellis. That has dwindled down. It's now getting much more even. Ten winners for Sellis. Sixteen for Huber. She's still winning in the winner department. Wimbledon has its ties with history and tradition. The French Championships has its style and fashion. The U.S. Open has New York, but Australian Open is just a celebration of tennis, and it's been a great couple of weeks. There are no pretensions down here in Australia. This is just a friendly group of people who have a deep interest in tennis. And a fantastic facility they've got going here. Eight, I think 18 million dollars was poured into it. The players love it. Game point for Sellers. Nine additional courts, uh, uh, hospitality area, indoor hospitality area, a promenade. They have really done tremendous things here. Game Sellers. Ace for Sellers. She leads now by one set to none. And 115 to Sellers in this game. It is one game to love, one set to none. Sellers. Huber serving. There was some talk of a boycott of the women players of this championship because of the non-equal prize money. I think that would have been about the dumbest thing that could have happened, and they eventually decided not to do so, which was a very good move because women's tennis is, albeit non-equal prize money in, in these events, the most successful women's sport by a long way, and it's because of the Grand Slams. By the way, I like Monica Sellis' idea of the men playing two out of three sets, but that's not going to happen anytime soon. And the real reason that the, uh, that, uh, the, the men's prize money was increased by 16% this year was because of an agreement between the ITF and the Grand Slams and the ATP Tour, where they had to be a certain percentage above the top tier on the men's tour. Huber is in trouble. Great points against her, her first serve game of the second set. Sellis just stretching Huber out now. Huber did such a tremendous job of staying in all of the points in the first set. It was starting to turn around in the second set. Great game for Sellis, and six of the last seven games have gone to Sellis. She was down 3-2. A break of serve in the first set, and since then, it's been all Monica. Well, that's not a fair thing to say. There were so many close games that could have gone the other way, too. And long ones. Who were stayed with her shot for shot. But the score suggests otherwise. <laughs> Sellis has the break. Two games to none. Twenty one year old Uncle Huber. On her seventh uh, 
tour title last year in Leipzig. She's won three of them at home in Germany. And she got to the final of the year-ending Corel WTA Tour Championships. Beat Mary Pierce and Kamika Date. I remember the second tournament for uh, who ever won was in Germany in her home country. Oh, where she took out Martina Navratilova, and that's the first time in eight years Martina had lost to an unseated player. She won herself a Porsche. Huber was too young to drive. <laughs> She's the number eight seed in the tournament, taking on the number one seed. Game point, Silas. Sellers is now on a roll and it looks like this may be it. She is now taking on Monica Sellers. She has lost the first set. She is down three games to love in the second. Love, love 15. On a personal note, uh, greeting and good luck to our good buddy. In fact, if you know him, he's your good buddy too, Mr. Bob Rossberg Jr. Rossi, we call him. He's in hospital, has been since before Christmas up at the Duke Medical Center in uh, North Carolina. He's got pancreatitis and he's going in for an operation on Wednesday. Good luck to you, Rossi. Good luck. And that's from everybody here, by the way. That's for sure. We miss him down here. been up to the net uh, too many times. In fact, this is only Cooper's third point. She's been able to win in this second set. Nice clap from Sella, something she'll do very often. Applaud her opponent's good shots. So will her parents, and it's so refreshing to see. Any good oh. shot where the wins or lose, and they'll give her the I'll give her a, a hand. That is so true, Cliff. I, mean, I don't think you can say en enough about both Mr. and Mrs. <laughs> Sellis. Uh, and that traumatic semifinal match just the other day against Chanda Rubin. I mean, Chanda was serving for the match and hit, hit a great shot, and there's Caroli just smiling and clapping for, for the great tennis. And he is her coach, and uh, it is a very difficult dynamic when your parent coaches you, but I tell you, in all the parent-child relationships I've seen, they seem to handle it amongst the best of all of them. Game point, Huber. Yeah, he's a delightful guy. Doesn't speak English that well, but well enough to be understood and get around effectively. Sellers leading three games to one. by winners out here today. Look at the intensity. One of the things Celis has always done so well is to get a very quick first step. And that's what allows her to be in good position to hit winners. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's very strong. 15.30, crucial time here. 3-1, breakers serve, second set, one set to none. This is a hit or a must-win situation for Huber. Keep in mind, she is from Germany. There. And the only reason I bring that up is the fact that she grew up in the shadow of Steffi Groff. I remember Uncle Hubert used to get so tired of being compared to Steffi. And, uh, I mean, she, that's a tough thing to be uh, compared to. As she has come through that, I think she's really shed the burden of trying to be the next Steffi. Break point for Huber. And uh, when you're talking about breakthrough tournaments, Chanda Rubin of the USA made her breakthrough bid here, got to the semi-final and played brilliantly against Silas. She thought she had it. And it was very close. Hoover has maintained and kept her identity and her confidence. Taking Steffi Graf to five sets certainly helped just a couple of months ago. Graf is not here, recovering from foot surgery. Graf was scheduled to play in Tokyo next week, but she uh, is unable to compete there. She's pulled out. Celis is going to appear there. This is the first time in Celis's career she's ever played four weeks consecutively, and I think she's beginning to feel that maybe that's a mistake. It's too much tennis. She said as much to you yesterday, well, didn't she? Well, she, she's got some shoulder problems, and she's definitely not serving with the same pace that she was early in the week. Game point Silas. And there's a huge contingency of German fans. They were out in force to cheer Boris Becker on yesterday. And they're out again today. They'll be out again tomorrow because Becker's in the final. He'll take on Michael Chang of the USA in the best of five sets. That's starting at 10 Eastern time. So I hope you join us for that tomorrow. Game point Sellers for a 4-1 lead. She won the first set She doesn't mean it. She's not happy with that call. 4 1 Sellers. Two breaks. One set Sellers. The top seed is in control of this women's final now. She has her signature on this first Grand Slam of the year. She leads it here by one set. Four games to one. And it's Love 15, Huber 7. It's been all downhill for Huber lately. Every 20 minutes, we are updating tonight's scores for you. So stay tuned right here to ESPN and our live coverage of the Ford Australian Open. And again tomorrow night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time, the men's final. Chang Becker. Love 30. Two doubles in a row. Love she 40. feels the pressure from the Sellers return to serve. That's five total for Huber. That is Zoltan Zuharski, coach of Uncle Huber. Oh, 
Francisco. Tillis has now got an insurmountable lead. Looks like five games to one and one set to none. She has won the Australian three times. She's won the French three times. The United States Open twice and came very close to it last year. 91, she took out Novotna here on this court. And uh, Mary Jo Fernandez in 92, she took out Steffi Graf in 93. A remarkable record for one so young. And how? what would her record have looked like had she been able to play these last two years and then some? Serving for the match. With new balls, that always adds a little pace. Yeah, you just look at what she's accomplished in a very short career. And it's quite incredible. She won seven of eight Grand Slams, eight total, very close to her ninth. Actually, Steffi she Groff won the first three here at Flinders Park, and then she won the next mm -hmm. three. And she won three consecutive French Opens. She missed 10 Grand Slam titles in that forced absence, and Steffi Graf won six of those, and you've got to think that Monica would have won a fair number of those 10 I that she missed. I think she'd have won a majority of them. There's no doubt in my mind she was clearly the number one player in the world at the time. She's two points away. There aren't many people that have a winning head-to-head -head record against Monica Seles. Steffi Graf is one of them. In Grand Slam's finals, though, they are two and two, including the win that the, U that the U.S. last year that Graf had over Sellers. Seventh to Graf. She beat her in the Wimbledon final. Seven four to Graf in the overall head to head. This now sets up two match points to win her fourth Australian Open title. Anka Huber is going to go up to number five in the world after this win or lose. Top five player. So it has been a successful sojourn here down under for her. Championship points still. his parents enjoying this moment it was a very competitive first set giving a hand to the crowd and then in the second set it was really all Monica Sellers remember she was the first one to lose her serve in the match at 3-2 and she broke Anka Huber back in a 14 minute game that was the turning point for this match so Monica Sellers an easy winner 6-4 6-1 and uh What's new? Nothing, nothing much. Well, it's, it really is quite incredible to, to imagine that she came back to win this first Grand Slam title of the year. Her only second Grand Slam tournament in the four that she's played since her comeback. And, uh, and this, this is all without, I think, really the preparation she would have liked to have had. But a terrific beginning of the year for Anka Huber, who's now fought the top five player in the world. Celis is the champ down under. We'll be back. Warm well, welcome back, everybody. We're down under at Flinders Park in Melbourne, Australia, where Monica Sellis' remarkable reign as the Queen of Tennis looks like in May once again become the, uh, the word and uh, the sport of tennis for 1996. Monica Sellis, an easy winner today of Anka Huber, 6-4-6-1. Betsy Nagelson. Huber did a good job in her first ever Grand Slam final. She was a very competitive first set, made Monica Sellis work very hard uh, in that first set but wow I guess you can uh, write another chapter in this fairy tale comeback story of 
that Monica's been able to uh, achieve. How do you think she's going to do against Steffi Groff when the two of them match up later this year? Well, I think that's the thing everybody's been waiting for. There was a possibility of that happening just next week in Tokyo. But uh, when it does happen, I...